Quickest intro you've ever seen. Let's get rolling. Many globe earthers love to point at lunar eclipses and act as if they were solid proof that the Earth is a globe. There is absolutely no way that there is such a thing as the Flat Earth Institute of Science. <laughs> Flat Earth and science most definitely do not belong in the same sentence together like that. Unless the science is in pseudoscience, then it makes sense. So anyway, I was curious, I googled it, and nothing of relevance came up. Thank goodness. The problem is, they don't prove it's a globe. Let me show you. Here I have a ball, and I'm going to cast the shadow of this ball onto another ball. All right? Look carefully at the shape of that shadow. Now here's the shadow of a ball being cast onto a plate. And please take notice of how the shadow is different here. Ah uh, yes, the shadow are of different shapes depending on the object the shadow is casted on. Spooky! What could possibly have caused that? Really quick, I'm going to let him finish his point before I jump in here. Now here is a picture of a lunar eclipse. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I think this presents a problem for the globe earth model. Excellent. Person who doesn't understand how light works attempts to recreate it using household items, not controlling for certain variables and conditions that otherwise would be present in the solar system. Look, it's relatable that you would try something like this, but remember, when you're trying to debunk an accepted scientific idea, you must make sure to fully understand it first before trying to debunk it. Now, flat earthers have done a lot of these light experiments, but there's a reason why you can't with regular equipment, and this is also a reason why the moon landing could not have been faked. The sun is incredibly far away, and so is the moon. Because the source of light is so far, the light rays that come in from the sun to the earth and moon essentially come in parallel. Light rays that come in parallel are different than ones that come from a source and expand outwards, what we call divergent light rays. When light rays come in parallel, it will not matter what the shape of the object that the shadow lands on is. The shadow will always be curved if it's created by the earth, just like what we see during lunar eclipses. However, if the light rays are divergent, then the 3D shape matters. In your example, the basketball protrudes outwards due to it being a ball, and on the area where it protrudes towards us, the light stops short before it is able to make an angle to manifest a curve. That may sound a little confusing, but imagine it the opposite way where we think in the shadow's perspective rather than the light. Due to the angle of the shadow, the center tries to reach further upwards to create a curve, but is stopped short by the protrusion of the basketball. Since the protrusion of the basketball is a gradient, being more obvious in the middle and gradually decreasing as we move towards the edges, it perfectly aligns and flattens the shadow. It is incredibly important to note that this would not happen if the light rays were coming in parallel, because there wouldn't be an angle in which the protrusion of the round object would stop the light. Therefore, a parallel light ray wouldn't care what the object's shape is that is projecting its shadow onto. Alright, anyway, for the next parts of the video, the Flat Earther plays some clips from Bill Nye the Science Guy and Big Think, both of which likely has copyright ID, so I'm going to cut them out for now. Now this leaves the question, why do we see so many curved shadows across the face of the moon? Does this mean the moon is actually flat? Yeah, so even if your point is correct, which it's not, that would only say something about the moon, not the earth. In fact, the earth being flat would still contradict, because how would that shadow be visible on the moon so that we could see both the sun and the moon? The earth would still have to be in between to cast that shadow, and then if the earth is flat, then everyone is physically on one side, and we wouldn't be able to see both the sun and the moon at the same time. But I don't think it's the shadow of the earth being cast on the moon here. I think something else is going on. The shadow of the Earth is not the only thing that could cause the moon to turn dark. That's the thing with you flat earthers. You never actually go do the investigation to provide actual proof of your model. All you do is speculate without proof. And this is an example of that where you're not even going to investigate what is causing the shadow, but just leaving it as, oh, it must be something other than the Earth. At best, you give suggestions, but never any concrete proof of anything. What if this has to do with some kind of a filter that comes between the Earth and the moon? A little while back, I had the opportunity to interview Cami Nodell, and she taught me some really fascinating facts about the atmosphere that I was totally unaware of before. She taught me about how the atmosphere acts as a filter and polarizes the light that passes through it. 
Right, the atmosphere does do that. It's called the Rayleigh sky model, and part of that model describes the polarization patterns of light that passes through the atmosphere, something caused by Rayleigh scattering. This pattern changes depending on the position of the sun, the angle in which the light hits the atmosphere, etc. But what does that have to do with the lunar eclipse? Things that people don't understand about that happen in reality, things that we should be looking the at. Yeah. The atmosphere um, polarizes any electric field, polarizes light, any um, light that's polarized is directionalized, polarized filters, crossing, you know, have different effects. Um. And you know how I'm always on the hunt for common ground. Here I found some common ground with Colorado State University, wherein they acknowledge the fact that the light from the sun gets polarized as it passes through the atmosphere. And they further claim that bees actually depend on this polarization for navigation. Yes, various animals depend on this polarization and use it as a navigation tool. Okay, so we found some common ground. Great, I'm going to skip to the part where this is relevant to his argument. As I understand it, magnetic fields are generally pretty round. And keep in mind, the moon has its own magnetic field and magnetic fields can also polarize light. Yeah, but the polarization of light in the atmosphere is not caused by a magnetic field. It's caused by air molecules and aerosols that float around. Oops, looks like you made a mistake there. But please, continue. And you want to know what the most beautiful thing about this hypothesis is? It is easily testable. Just bring out a third filter and see if you can't bring the moon back into view during the next lunar eclipse. Okay, if it's so easy, then just do it yourself and put it in this video instead of just speculating. You don't even have to wait until it's a lunar eclipse before trying this. You just have to wait until any part of the moon has a shadow. Also, you're still not explaining what exactly would be causing this polarization and shadow other than a general sense of magnetic fields, which really isn't enough. In addition, since Rayleigh scattering happens in the Earth's atmosphere, you're essentially saying that the moon is not inside the Earth's atmosphere since you're using lenses to bring the moon back into view on the light between the moon and your eyes rather than the sun and the moon. I don't think you understand the full implications of your claim here, but be my guest and try to prove it anyway. That being said, I'm 100% certain you won't be able to bring the moon back into view because this is a garbage hypothesis that is inconsistent with reality. But please know that this is not the only hypothesis of what else could be going on here. Please keep in mind, refraction can also cause shadows to appear. While I do not currently know the exact cause of lunar eclipses, I know I can say with confidence that they are not caused by the shadow of the Earth. Phenomenal. Don't tell us what it is, just tell us what it's not. If you're following this philosophy, you wouldn't believe in the flat Earth at all, since you technically would only know that the Earth is not round. One very important vocabulary word that everyone interested in lunar eclipses should learn is the word selenelian. This is kind of an essential term for flat earthers to know. A selenelian is a lunar eclipse that takes place while the sun is visible. Okay, so I have an entire video about selenelions. This is actually incredibly ironic because he literally just mentioned light refractions and then immediately after selenelions. He probably doesn't know that refractions itself is the reason that selenelions exist. The number one explanation I have heard globe earthers provide when trying to explain selenelions is that refraction is causing both the sun and the moon to be visible. That is some pretty extreme refraction if you ask me. What? You literally were ready to accept that refractions is able to make an entire moon disappear in a shadow, but you're not ready to accept that refraction can bend the light a little? I'm glad that we can agree that refraction is possible so high up in the air without any signs of distortion. That is some pretty significant common ground right there. Our flat earth model actually depends on this kind of refraction taking place this high up. It is essential in explaining how sunsets work on the flat earth. Now that's a better explanation to how a sunset happens on a flat earth rather than just perspective which many other flat earthers seem to preach, but that would require refraction to bend the light in the wrong way, curving upwards rather than downwards like it is in reality. Not saying upwards cannot happen, it's just rare. Definitely rarer than seeing the sunset happen every day on all parts of the earth. Anyway, he goes on a little bit more about selenelions, but I've already made a video on this so feel free to check it out. In short, he just has a misunderstanding on how selenelions actually work. And that brings us to the end of this video. 
Making fun of flat earthers is fun, but ultimately exhausting. We'll be back with a non-flat earth video next week. Kudos to Fireshard, Alan Morton, Miss Fixit, along with all my other patrons who have supported me all this time. I can't thank you enough. See you all next week.